Thank you. So yes, I'm Jumi. I'm going to talk about commanding Emacs from Coq. Uh, so when I say macro today, uh, it's, it doesn't refer to your usual racket macros, scheme macros. It refers to editor macros, so um, sequence of editor commands that you run in, in, a, uh, in your editor. So uh, I also have another title for this talk. Emacs is considered harmful, but I didn't want to go with that since this is a scheme workshop. But I still wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not that ambitious. OK. So what's Coq? So this is, this is a um, scheme community. So I'm going to explain what Coq is first. It's an interactive theorem prover that has a similar syntax to OCaml uh, and has amazing Emacs support, thanks to Proof General. And here's what it looks like. Uh, you have different lines that you can go let's step through. First, we can step through a definition and get a response from Coq that says b is defined. Or we can check the type of b and get b is a bool. Or we can evaluate the given expression and get that b evaluates to false. So these three things, and also we have other kinds of uh, similar commands, are called vernacular commands. We're going to use them today in our interaction. So here's how that stepping through works in the background. Uh, Emacs can send to Coq a request as a vernacular command, and then Coq would send a response as an output. And all of this interaction happens in proof general. That's the, the bridge between Emacs and Coq. And here's what I want to do using these things. I want to be able to define um, Coq functions. The first one is a function that takes a character to a character and makes it uppercase. And the second one is an editor macro. What it does is it gets a character first and then binds it to C and then replaces the character with the uppercase version of C. So I can uh, step through this and also enter some new text into the buffer and then the cursor's on J, and I want to run this editor macro with a reference to make upper, this, man, uh, this thing that we just defined. And then I want to have the J uppercase. So what do we do here? We define an editor macro in Coq, and it def it, this, this macro depends on computation of non-trivial Coq uh, functions, like the uppercase function. That doesn't really translate to Emacs in any way. But we run this editor macro in Emacs Lisp. And how do we do that? We first define an embedded domain-specific language uh, in Coq that helps users define editor macros. And I'm going to show this to you later. And we wrote an interpreter for this EDSL in Emacs Lisp. That might sound weird, but we're going <laughs> to see it. <laughs> and then we're going to execute this, uh, e execute the atomic actions of this EDSL in, in, in Emacs. And whenever we see an uncomputed expression, like the uh, uppercase function, we're going to send that expression back to Coq for evaluation and get the result back and do whatever we need to do with the rest. So run this macro. Here's how it works in the background. First, Emacs sends to Coq a, a vernacular command that says, evaluate make upper the macro we had in call by need. Coq evaluates it and sends back a string as an output, because that's how um, cocktop works. It says, OK, uh, the first thing in this is get car, and then the monadic binds to some continuation. I elided this. So Emacs then looks at this, parses it, and then gets a character under the cursor, which was in, in this case j, and sends back another vernacular command. It says, OK, here's the same uh, continuation function. And then we apply the result of this the string to this function, and then we evaluate that one. Uh, at least we ask Coq to evaluate that one. Coq evaluates it one step and sends back, OK, uh, then the first thing in the evaluation of this is remove car and then monadic bind and some other continuation, because replace car is defined as remove car and insert car. Uh, and then Emacs looks at this, parses it, and then sees, sees removes, remove car, removes the character under the cursor, and then sends back the result. The result is the same continuation we had in the previous step, with remove card just returns unit. So units TT in Coq. Doesn't really matter in here, but still. Uh, and then sends, OK, Emacs sends this thing, this um, vernacular to Coq for uh, execution. Coq evaluates it as we asked and sends back insert, ca insert car capital J as a string. So the reason that this 
to upper J, return to uh, capital J here, is that now call binding evaluation sees that this is the thing that we need to evaluate. So we did evaluate it and normalize it. And then uh, Emacs inserts his character, capital J, and then realizes that the macro execution is complete. OK. So here's the EDSL in Coq that um, helps us define these macros. Uh, we have two constructors to make this easily monadic, uh, the return and bind. Uh, are we all familiar with monads? Should we? Should, OK, good. <laughs> I don't want to give one tutorial here, so that's good. Uh, so I'm sure this has some connection to free monads, the fact that I have these two constructors in this. So if anyone knows more, please contact me afterwards. Uh, so you remember that I said atomic a couple times in this talk. I call the constructors like except bind atomic because Emacs knows how to deal with those constructors. And here's how it knows. OK, finally some lisp. <laughs> uh, we have a run action function that takes uh, a command and then has some side effect or not, and then returns some expression back. So for get car, for example, it gets the following car in Emacs and changes it into a string and sends it to cock. Or for remove car, it has a side effect, deletes one character under the cursor, and then uh, sends back TT, the, the unit expression. Or for ret, the return constructor, it doesn't do anything, just sends back the same thing. So as you can see, if you want to extend the CDSL, all we have to do is just add more constructors. Or if you want to make it more customizable or more extensible, you can hard code. You can create a way to write Lisp in in, in Coq and then send the X expression back and whatnot. But I didn't want to go that route because that's that's more complex. This is easier to understand. Okay. So here's the rest of the interpreter that we had in Emacs Lisp, and this is all Emacs Lisp that we have. Uh, we have a run function. In that, we have a call to proof general. So we send back uh, the eval called by need of some expression. I'm going to explain that thing later. And then when we get the result back, we parse the response. And here's some parsing thing that I elided because it's kind of hairy to deal with strings in Emacs Lisp. Uh, and then when we, get, when we parse this, we send that back to run action, the interpreter that we saw before. OK. There is one little caveat with this. So we assume that all the editor macro definitions that we had were of the form m bind f, where m is an atomic action. But that might not be the case. Or we, we assume that this entire thing could also be atomic action itself. But that might not be the case. We could have um, binds on the left-hand side that are nested. So we have to deal with that. Uh, our macro definitions could, uh, don't, don't really have to fit this format. But since edit is a monad that uh, obeys monadic laws, uh, we can just do virus association on this and make it uh, change into, into a nice format. So here's how that looks. Uh, here we see an editor macro. On top level, we have a bind. On the left-hand side, we, had another, we have another bind. Uh, so all we have to do is to get this edit atomic action and create a new continuation with the previous continuation we had on the left-hand side. So we move it inwards. And if we repeat this transformation until we <coughs> have an atomic action on the top level bind left-hand side, because get car also could possibly be a nested bind. If we repeat this uh, until we get atomic action, we get the format that we want. And I have a field-based call function to do that. So it's if you haven't heard of fields, independent types, it basically means um, your language doesn't really allow non-termination. So you give it a number until which you run the same function. OK, that was quicker than I thought. So what's the end goal here? So I want to define ID features for Coq in Coq itself. I realize that this requires a more elaborate EDSL or a better extensibility. Uh, story for my EDSL, uh, but we might get there one day. Or we can apply this trick to other languages like Idris. Idris already has a better extensibility story. 
And also, it requires better support uh, from COC for type-driven devel development. Uh, if you want to add, say, if you want to, for example, um, ask for the type of a hole, uh, we currently cannot do that in, uh, in COC. So we need a better way to do that. So that's it. So we have uh, Slido also, if you'd like. I forgot to announce at the beginning of the talk, but uh, you can submit questions there, sli.do and then ICFP 2019. Uh, and I think they're supposed to show up on my phone. <laughs> but you can also ask them in person, so. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that you can't actually handle uh, monadic normal form in your, in your, ED, your interpreter at Emacs. Um, you have to write associate everything. Mm -hmm. So this reminds me of uh, a normal form, which is a sort of associated the other way, I think. Um, and you can phrase that as a syntactic restriction. Can you also phrase your DSL, like uh, rewrite it to be syntactically restricted to already be associated correctly? I'm not sure. I'm inclined to say no. Because like if we have stuff like replace car, that means you cannot use it as the first thing in your monad. I'm not sure if we can restrict that syntactically easily without giving up the expressive power of a monad, but. Um, wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't your user just be forced to write uh, in the, you'd basically be writing in CPS um, in your DSL. I'm not saying you ought to do this. I'm saying, uh, could you do this in order, as a way of sort of checking that all of your, everything you're sending to your interpreter is well formed, or proving that your write associativity function is sort of correct? Something to look at. I haven't thought about that much, but yeah, thank you. So I have a question. Uh, is the connection to Coq here simply that Coq is your favorite language for writing such things, or do you expect to get a specific benefit uh, about proving you know, rewriting or, or editor, sorry, editor macros? It's a bit of both. Okay. Uh, so something specific in Coq about this is the vernacular commands. So if we go back to this these things. So I don't know of any other language that has commands that say, OK, evaluate this expression and send me back the result. That would also go back, uh, go like in the file. Coq already has this automatically in the language. So I didn't want to, I, I didn't have to add any other any construct to Coq itself. While in address, I would have to do something like that, I think. Well, uh, so if you're, if you're running. So like the the the, uh, yeah, the, the thing with the right hand side, for example, were scheme, and you could say eval quote, and would you not have the same situation? I mean, without the types, obviously. Uh, Can you specify the evaluation mode you want in scheme? Do you, does I mean does it matter? It, it does matter for per performance reasons, but. And I, I think you. The thing is, is that you you have holes that need to be filled, that are filled as part of this dialogue. Right, and if you just called called schemes eval, it's expecting a concrete thing. You could have the eval uh, generate the function back um, if you were to have. Had, had if you so you, so you're saying that the, the serialization the isn't an issue. There's yeah. a, a textual representation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a record fest yesterday. Uh, David Christensen gave a talk about. Uh, uh, Normalization by evaluation. So if you hook that up with Scheme, mm -hmm. okay. So I think you could, you could get Scheme on the other side there. I mean, I'm not saying it's Coq specific. I'm sure you can implement the same stuff in other languages too, but yeah. it was just there, so it was easier to, to do. Okay. Any other questions? Sure. No? Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.